And thanks everyone for joining us in what are indeed uh, crazy times. I get the uh, pleasure of walking through the new models with uh, you all. So I guess without further ado, let's get into it. Kind of always like to start uh, in the beginning. Um, and, um, you know, Sony has a huge and long history in projection um, dating back to 1973. When we first bought out our first 4K home cinema objectors in 2011, the VW 1000, who would have thought that in 2020 we'd be stuck in the midst of a global pandemic that has impacted so much of the world we live in. But the engineers who developed those first VW 1000s, uh, pandemic aside, wouldn't have thought that content and how we viewed content would have changed so much in that time either. 4K, HDR, high frame rate and streaming have all changed massively in a short period of time. Today's, today's projectors need to think smarter and be more technical, technically capable. Today, we're gonna to launch three new amazing projectors that address all of these challenges that 2020 has thrown at, thrown at them. So the three new projectors we're launching today are the VPL GTZ 380, uh, which can best, best be described as an absolute beast, the VPL VW790 and the VPL VW590. Let's start off with the, five, uh, the GTZ380. So the product concept here is to make vision a reality. And, um, you know, that's achieved with high brightness. It's achieved with high native resolution, uh, high contrast. You know, the native contrast in this project is very high. Uh, wide colour space and maintaining a compact, you know, uh, usable chassis. And that brings us to the VPL GTZ380. The cornerstone of all of our projection systems and have been for the last 15 plus years is our um, SXRD technology. Uh, the, SX, uh, SX, uh, the current SXRD chip, which is a 0.74, um, has evolved to, um, particularly for this model, um, with a new um, set of uh, parameters to help it handle the extreme amount of heat and uh, light output that this projector handles. Uh, it is worth noting that um, um, it's a three chip system. So we have uh, three chips, one RGB, one for R, one for red, one for green, one for blue. Uh, and that is a, a constant across our fleet, which are all native 4K projectors with 8.8 .8 million pixels. So the GTZ380, uh, achieves massive color volume. Uh, it achieves full DCI-P3 at 100% of its brightness. It's a significant change in the way projectors behave. Typically, projectors to achieve DCI-P3 have to give up something in terms of brightness uh, or in processing. This projector does not do that. And it achieves it through some brand new uh, light source. So the GTZ um, is a, what, what comes in from a long list of laser projectors. You know, starting back in 2013, which have evolved from single blue clusters to combinations of blue and blue clusters to this new cluster. Um, so this new light engine uses the traditional uh, laser phosphor blue cluster and also incorporates a blue laser and a red laser. But those, if those incorporated into this workflow increase the color volume and the bright, brightness output so that we can achieve full DCI-P3 color space at 100% or 10,000 lumens, which is a massive change. It allows us to, um, on a four meter type screen, get up to 500 um, lumens or nits at, at the screen, which is a significant um, change and helps us real, really realize full HDR capabilities. And the real magic, um, I guess, from our uh, modernization and um, and uh, um, uh, I guess dealing with the most modern of all of the new challenges we have is the new X1 Ultimate um, processor. Uh, this processor comes from our Bravia um, um, TV business, which um, and this particular processor comes from our high-end OLEDs and high-end LED LCDs. Um, it has some pretty amazing capabilities. So we can uh, this particular processor can define objects, um, object-based HDR remastering, dynamic HDR enhancer, object-based super resolution, dual database processing, and digital contrast optimizer we'll talk about in a little bit more detail as we go through. So the object-based HDR remastering uh, looks at individual objects by frame, by object, um, and helps to redefine um, them, so give them sharpness, but also give them uh, additional color and contrast. 
the uh, dual database processing really speaks to, well, originally spoke to looking at lower resolution content such as SD and HD content that's been pushed into the projector. And now I guess looking at streaming content coming in at different types of resolutions um, and different types of performance um, where the projector is looking at those objects in real time, cleaning up any uh, artificial noise or digital noise, and then looking at sharpening the image. Um, the chip looks at a, a massive database of images um, and knows how things behave. So a mountain's a mountain and a tree's a tree and a bird's a bird, and they all behave and perform and move in a different way. This projector is looking at that by frame, by object. It's also drilling down in a little bit more detail on those uh, objects. So um, the two scales here, the X1, we're gonna talk about it a little, a little bit more depth when we get to the 790 and 590. But the X1 Ultimate actually looks at individual clusters of items and it identifies individual items within a cluster. So looking at the grapes, for example, it's highlighting each grape by um, defining it, giving it a sharpness and also uh, a colour uh, that's particularly assigned to just these. So very clever by frame, by object, by, um, yep. So the projector comes lensless uh, and we'll have a few different lens throw options um, to um, start with, but the standard throw lens is the, is the atypical lens we sell. The, the projector is an absolute amazing um, piece of equipment. Before the uh, pandemic, I was lucky enough to see it at ISC. And uh, to tell you that I was amazed and uh, blown away by it is an understatement. It's simply the best projector I've ever seen. Um, and I've seen a lot over the years. Um, um, you know, the, it, it, the setup was producing you know, 130 or 140 inch screen, 700 nits, super bright for a projection system. And uh, the image is the quality, I believe, of a of an OLED. Um, we'll be shipping this model um, into, um, well, this model doesn't ship until um, uh, January, February next year. And we're hoping to have some units into Australia um, at the back end of this year, depending on the pandemic and depending on our ability to travel around to get around to do some fairly high end um, customer experience type situations. So um, if you have any interest in seeing it, please speak, uh, reach out to your, um, your distributor or myself or Anna directly and we can have a chat about when and how that might look. The next uh, two projectors we're going to talk about are our brand new VPL VW790 and our brand new VPL VW590. I'm going to go through all the finite details and we won't be doing that in this session at all. We're sort of talking about definitely where the new projectors um, you know, have some similarities to the old ones, but also have um, some new enhancements. So the VPL uh, VW760, the previous model, was a very uh, accomplished um, projector and the 790 takes a little bit more um, uh, takes some of those you know um, cutting edge technologies and then enhances it so again an 84k projector using our sxrd technology uh, um, all of the standard inputs and um, motion flow that the previous models had this is a laser projector um, we'll talk about lasers in just a second um, and um, uses um, something called digital focus optimizer which you may or may not be familiar with and we'll talk about that in a little bit more depth at the end of the presentation or during the presentation as well. But where this projector gets crazy and crazy good is this new dynamic HDR enhancer. Again, we'll talk about that in, uh, in a few moments. Uh, the benefit to lasers uh, may or may not be apparent up front, but we get c consistent brightness and color. You know, the, uh, the projectors have up to 20,000 hours of virtually zero maintenance. And that means in that time, no lamp changes, but also it means that we have a nice linear gradual drop off in brightness rather than the bell curve style that we get with our lamps. It means that we get a lot longer, um, you know, from, from a calibration perspective, the projector's calibrated, the projector will look its best for much longer. It's a smooth dynamic contrast. The projector has um, a dynamic nature to it, so it can brighten itself up or darken depending on the scene. And you know, because people like TVs that turn on and off really quickly, lasers behave the same way. Same way, They don't need to be heated up or cooled down. So the 790 for all intents and purposes behaves much like a television would in the right environment. The VPL VW590, um, again, is an upgrade on the, VP, the successful VPL VW570. Um, again, with some additional, you know, again, with our 4K HDR and SXRD technology, um, um, all the same inputs that we had previously, um, excellent um, dynamic contrast. Um, in this model now, we're adding digital focus optimizer and the dynamic HDR enhancer. 
there's some very interesting and, and great step ups in the new models. I'm going to cut to a video now that Paul McLean shot from Audioactive just to touch on some of those and then we'll go back into some more depth on those technologies in just a second. Sony and Audioactive Australia presents First Impressions with the 790 and 590 projectors. Unboxing. So we've done a side-by-side -side comparison with the 570 and the 590. We've also done a side-by-side -side comparison with the 760 and the new 790 projectors. What we've seen in particular with the 570, let's just talk about that one, is a big difference in the HDR dynamics. So the color is a lot more saturated out of the box. We're using one and flicking to the other. We can see a big detail in the color space and that's got to do with Sony's new X14 projector chip and they're applying a dynamic algorithm to the HDR content that's coming through your streaming services and Blu-rays. Again we can see big detail in the difference with that new very powerful X14 projector chip and again they're applying the HDR dynamic so it's time to bring Spectacular home. We set up both the previous 570 projector and the new 590 projector running off a HDMI splitter. We're able to show you live footage of what the results are with both projectors. We also set up the 760ES and the 790ES. Watch this content. Spectacular new features with the 590 and 790 projector. The X14 projector chip now powers super resolution reality creation and dynamic HDR enhancer with settings for both HDR and SDR. Sharpness is even clearer with the digital focus optimizer.
Thank you, Paul. Um, it's, a, 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 it's been a really challenging time during the COVID period to um, you know, firstly get the projectors into the country and then secondly be able to get them out um, and show people. And we only did receive these early last week and, and Paul did an amazing job to um, firstly get them, go down and collect them and then uh, and then create those videos. Um, what we wanted to really give you an idea is just how much the older model or how much the new model, sorry, has improved on the older model and where that grunt from that new processing from Bravia has made a massive difference to the way the projectors look. And hopefully you got that feel from those videos. So again, thank you, Paul, for uh, helping us out with the video. Um, it's, you know, I think I covered it really well. So um, walk through some of the technologies in the new models, the 590 and the 790, which are similar technologies. Um, the 790 being the laser version and the 590 being a lamp-based model. So the X1 from Projector is the scalar or chipset taken from our Bravia team and has been optimised, obviously, because projectors behave slightly differently from a TV for a um, for the TV. Where the chip, like I said, for the uh, X1 Ultimate is different from our previous chips is that it actually is looking at individual frame rather than looking at a movie in its totality in, and applying similar um, profiles across the whole movie. It's looking at each individual frame and making some assess assessments by frame. But it's also smart enough to look at clarity. And so not only is it looking at dynamic range and improving dynamic range, it's actually looking at resolution and improving resolution, again, from sources from multiple different places. So the enhanced, uh, dynamic enhanced, uh, dynamic HDR enhancer is again, a frame by frame HDR um, uh, rendering. It's looking at every frame, making an assessment on what that frame is. Is it a dark scene? Is it a light scene? Um, do I need to pump more brightness in? Do I need to pump more or less brightness in? In the 790, the iris and the laser will work in conjunction to give you a, an improved black floor on the 590. Uh, and that's where the laser will have an advantage um, over the lamp projector. But both of them are doing the same job at the same time. And as an example, from our previous version, which was the old contrast enhancer, um, again, taking metadata, well, not metadata, information across the whole movie and applying the same standard to that. The new, the new dynamic HDR enhancer is looking at each image by frame and making an assessment on what that frame should look like, whether it needs more brightness, less brightness, whether it's dark or whether it's light. Um, and I think you were able to notice that in the video that Paul uh, shot earlier. Also makes a massive difference now with the super resolution for reality creation. You know, in the old days when we brought out our first 4K projector back in 2011, we could pop an old Blu-ray disc in and show you clearly that reality creation was improving the sharpness and clarity of the image. Now, as content got better on disc and we started getting 4K content, you know, it was quite tricky to really show you how good reality creation could be. Um, but fast forward to 2020 and, um, you know, the streaming giants now dominate um, what people watch and you know disc manufacturing is getting a little less so I go to my local JB Hi-Fi and you know the 4k disc section isn't really grown over the last six to 12 months it's still much much the same but certainly the portfolio of 4k streaming content has increased massively and so the super resolution for reality creation now starts to tap into that huge database of algorithm and uh, performance that Sony's been uh, generating over years um, and helps to improve the um, the um, you know performance of that streaming content, and so I believe the 570, sorry, the 590 and the 790 will look much sharper, particularly for streaming content, than they had before. And it is something that we need to address because customers are are streaming more and more, um, and that's certainly evident by the amount of people on Netflix. Um, um, uh, you know, 190 million plus is a lot. Talk briefly about the Digital Focus Optimizer earlier, but the di Digital Focus Optimizer is across our fleet of projectors. It started off in the, uh, the, the VPL VW870 and was in, updated and enhanced in the VW5000 and then brought down to the VW760. And now it's in our VW790 and VW590. Uh, for those of you who've been selling Sony projectors for a while, you know that the front piece of glass or front piece of lens on our projector is wide dispersion glass, an aspheric lens that helps us optimize the sweet spot on an image so that we have the biggest, sharpest image in the center of the screen that we could possibly have. The digital focus optimizer helps sharpen the edges. So 
those edges that may not get the uh, optics right, um, the digital focus optimizer comes in and digits and corrects those. So um, that gives us a corner to corner sharp image um, as opposed to just a center image that's sharp. Uh, and and it, can, it is very visible once you see it uh, on a screen. The other areas of improvement with the new models over the previous models is our ability to calibrate the projectors. So previously, uh, the only uh, area that could be kept was contrast um, when you change any other element for SDR or HDR content. All of the um, all of those presets would stay for SDR or HDR. Um, in the new models, the seven, uh, 590 and 790, the and the GGZ380, the um, when we calibrate an SDR reference. Um, and then go and calibrate a HDR reference, let's say on, uh, on cinema film one, um, those defined changes stay with either the SDR reference or the HDR reference. It kind of just means previously you would have had to perhaps calibrate a SDR reference point um, and then change to a HDR reference point. The new model, we may just set up, you know, cinema film one or reference as a single point and go back to not using the remote at all. I guess for a while we've been talking about trying to get the best out of a projector, having to use multiple, you know, color space presets. Um, and I think for those people setting up uh, who like the seven forget, um, once a projector has been calibrated, it can pretty much stay in the same preset. Um, for both you know, SDR content and HDR content, which is a major um, change from uh, our previous projectors. So obviously a lot of applications for both the 790 and the 590 in terms of homes, you know, um, I think um, you've all got enough, uh, 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 you know, understanding of the projectors and brightness to understand where they fit in. And our full lineup this year sees us with three lamp-based projectors, the HW65, the VPL VW270 and VPL and the new VPL VW590 are all lamp based projectors. From then on in, it's all laser. So the VPL VZ1000 ES is our native ultra short throw 4K projector. The brand new VPL VW790 ES, uh, the VPL VW870 ES, the VPL VW5000 ES is ongoing, and our brand new flagship beast, the VPL GTZ380 or the Raptor, um, you'll see it called in some of our Marcoms. So the takeout today is that we've launched three brand new models, the GTZ380, VW790 and VW590. The GTZ380 is our brand new flagship model. Um, it adds the X1 Ultimate for projector, uh, 10,000 lumen while maintaining a high native contrast and also capable of achieving full DCI-P3 coverage with no brightness loss. Native 4K SXRD, which is kind of our bag and has been since 2011, and a, uh, a compact chassis. Although it's a big beast, it's 60 kilos, it's a lot smaller than comparable projectors in its um, brightness level area. The VPL VW790 is our premium laser model, and the VPL VW590 is our premium lamp based model, both powered by the X1 full projector. Both have dynamic the new dynamic HDR enhancer, both have an improved super resolution for processing um, sub. 4K content and streaming content, and both carry the digital focus optimizer. Uh, for, for his final thoughts, we've uh, asked Tony O'Brien, who uh, owns Clarity Calibration, for some uh, yeah, so from some first thoughts on the projector that, that he got to see last week. Hi, I'm Tony O'Brien, uh, Clarity Calibration, ISF Certified Calibrator, also a member of the Professional Video Alliance. I've just been spending some time with Sony's new lamp-based 590 and their laser-based 790 projectors. Initial impressions are, are very, very good. The first thing you're going to notice about these guys are the improved black levels and their ability to handle HDR content. Some big takeaways from this uh, were the beautiful black levels. Uh, that was one of the first thing I noticed. The other, the other thing Sony brought to the, the table this time around is dynamic tone mapping. So both of these projectors are able to assess on a frame by frame basis and uh, apply the necessary tone mapping. Both also feature um, the X1 processor, which has been used in uh, Sony's OLEDs and top of the range LED LCDs in the past. 
images I saw today were, were absolutely fantastic. Um, the new tone mapping really brings something special. I measured uh, about 110 nits on a 130 inch screen, which is the sort of territory we wanted to be in. Um, that was on the 590. Having said that, 110 nits on screen look noticeably brighter than what I'm used to. Um, I'm keen to be calibrating a few more of these soon. Um, also keen to perhaps get one in for review. In addition to those deep dark black levels, you've got uh, lots of detail in, in high bright uh, explosions, flares. Um, it's HDR's looking really good. Um, so thanks for having me out to have a look today, Sony. Thanks, Tony, again for uh, putting that video together and, and, um, and having a first impression of the projector that he got to see late last week. So, um, yeah, I, right now we're going to switch over. Well, so firstly, welcome back, Anna. Um, and hopefully, hopefully everyone got a little bit out of that. Um, the information will be flowing out on the new projectors on a more technical level over the next, uh, well, right now. Um, and uh, you can certainly inquire directly with Sony or your local distributor. Um, uh, yeah, I guess for now we're going to uh, have a few Q&As and uh, we'll wrap up the session after that. So, um, yeah, if we can get some questions up on the screen, that'd be great. The, the VPL760 was touted as having the X1 Extreme processor. Is the hardware changed to the 790 or is it just a new feature enabled in the firmware? It's, I mean, it's definitely a new hardware element. I mean, the one thing about, uh, particularly from a HDR perspective and then uh, from a scaling perspective for um, streaming content is that that's uh, really driven by improvements in hardware technology over the years and you know TV leads that you know every year a new TV comes out and where the TV improves is definitely in its performance um, in handling streaming content but also it's in, in its performance in handling high dynamic range and um, the new 790 really taps into that that scaling process for the new newer TVs to help um, again improve the dynamic range uh, performance and also handle streaming and lower resolution content. So yeah, definitely a hardware improvement, not just a software improvement. I'll take this one, Mike. If cool. so, um, these these new models are all the um, seven ninety and the five ninety are uh, coming into our warehouse uh, segly over this month. So, um, yes, get your orders in and um, we will sure be able to ship them out to you. Uh, the GTZ, uh, the GTZ uh, 380 is not going to be available until January uh, 20 or, yeah, 2021. So that's a bit, bit more while to go. Yeah, and we are, as I said before, we are looking at hopefully trying to get um, some units into the country, depending on this whole pandemic craziness. And I'm sitting down here in Melbourne locked in my house, um, not able to leave. So, you know, while we're in this scenario where we have limited um, tra uh, travel, uh, it might be tricky to get it into the country, but as soon as we do, we'll be letting dealers and uh, customers know where they can go and see that projector. So just throw it on that, uh, dealers can start receiving stock from this month, but you definitely need to speak to your, to your local distributor about availability as um, you know with all things in pandemics things aren't as smooth and easy we do we have our, the stock that we definitely wanted for this month but um, you know uh, the demand is high so um, and and I did touch on it before global demand in projection has increased since the pandemic it hasn't decreased um, so um, yeah definitely speak to your distributor about what's available and when uh, stuff will be available for you and your customers. Yep, so that's a really good question. So typically our projectors that have, um, that are primarily made for cinema, not well, they're all made for cinemas, but the projectors that are made uh, for dedicated spaces, the laser projectors, so the 790, 870, VW uh, 5000 and GTZ 380 only come in black. Um, the other models, the lamp models, come in both black and white. So the VPL VW 270 will ship in black and white and the VPL VW 590 will ship in both black and white. Uh, thanks, James. Yeah, um, so if we don't have any more questions, 
Uh, I may say uh, thank you to all for joining us. Oh, we do have some more questions coming through. Serena, is there a 590, is the 590 a direct replacement upgrade from the 270 footprint lens? Sorry. So the, so the current, the, the, the replacement model is the VPL BW590 directly replaces the VPL BW570 and the VPL BW790 directly replaces the VPL BW760. They are exactly the same footprint. They have the same lenses, the same throw ratio. So it is a good question. There is no change in terms of the basics of the projectors, the menu and GUIs are, are look and smell exactly the same way. So um, very, um, very similar to the previous model. The really, uh, the magic is in that scalar in the seven, uh, five, five, ninety, and seven ninety. And again, the technical information should be up on the website pretty soon and available from your distributors. So if you have any uh, real techie type questions, by all means, ask now. But in terms of um, drilling down on more information, the technical information will certainly be available from today. Hi Jess, thanks for that. Given, uh, I think everyone can read his question. Um, so projectors typically um, have a much longer life uh, than, a, uh, than a TV. And you know, these projectors generally have around about a two year life. So the processor will be um, two years old at the end of its life and we don't get an, uh, an ability to update it from a hardware perspective. If there's any software updates in that period, then yeah, absolutely we'll be able to apply it. And I think, um, if anyone's been following the news about how Sony's changed, um, you know, um, the projected business falls under a greater display business now. And we are really talking about our Blavia scale technology really for the first time in any gusto. And, you know, TVs certainly have a lot more updates during their life than a projector does. So, um, yeah, I think we just watch this space and if there are any improvements come out along the way, we'll be pushing that out across our network and our, our customers. But from a hardware perspective, there's no updates throughout the year or the thought. So Clinton, yeah, positioning memory is available on all of our projectors, but the VPL VW270. Uh, all other models carry picture positioning um, and use a newer picture, picture positioning block that was uh, rolled out in the 570. And uh, um, yeah, so yeah, absolutely that's a feature that is maintained throughout the fleet uh, by the VW270. Okay, I think we still have a few more questions coming through. Yep, so HDCP 2.2 compliant um, on both HDMI ports. So HDMI 2.0B, uh, I think they are, um, on both ports. We actually used to be a little tricky and put it on HDMI 2 only. <laughs> and then uh, a couple of years ago, we actually rolled it out across both um, to make it less, uh, well, we didn't have to guess anymore, I guess. Okay, I think um, that's all for the questions today. Thank you for your time today. Um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Brilliant. Thank you, guys.